Welcome to a review of the Arsenal of Heroes expansion for the Aventuria Adventure card game. Big thanks to Ulysses Spiel for sending us this, along with some other cool Aventuria products to check out. Arsenal of Heroes expansion for Aventuria was designed by the designers of the basic game, Michael, Palm, and Lucas Sack. Note, you will need a copy of the Aventuria Adventure Card Game Core Box to use this expansion. This expansion has an MSRP of $34.99 US. Now, the main purpose of this expansion is to expand the deck building options in Adventuria. Along with this, it also comes with extra dice, tournament rules, some rule clarifications, including an official FAQ, and variant builds for each of the four heroes included on the core game. Now, if you haven't checked out Adventuria, you're not sure what I'm talking about here and you're curious about the game, be sure to check out my Adventuria Adventure card game review for the lowdown on this cool fantasy card game that has really captured our interest. Now, jumping back to this expansion, if you want to take a look and uh, be sure to check out our Arsenal of Heroes unboxing video on YouTube, mm -hmm. and you can enjoy the sheer joy and shock as Mo discovers bits he wasn't mm -hmm. expecting in the box. Yeah, this comes in a small box. It's got a nice plastic insert under a surprisingly thick 19-page booklet. Um, the insert holds a set of four 20-sided dice, five six-sided dice, and a sealed, rather thick deck of cards. And everything here is excellent. Card quality matches the original, which is what you hope for in a game like this, but no issues whatsoever. All right, what are we doing with these new cards and dice? How do you use Arsenal of Heroes to expand your Aventuria games? All right, so let's break it up into the different components and starting with the dice. So these are etched custom dice. They're color coded and feature unique symbols on them uh, on the roll you want. So the ones on the D20s and the sixes on the D6s. Now the D20s are meant to be used for your attack rolls and dodging during the game. They're color coded based on the roll type. So you got a red die with a sword on it for melee attacks, a green die with a bow on it for ranged attacks, a purple die for magic attacks with the explosion and a yellow die with boots for dodging. Yeah, this is all fun. I mean, as a dice collector, I can see the value, but unless you're playing this all the time, it's actually a little tricky to have to think about what color attack or you're doing, uh, or you know, what color attack dodge is to make sure you're grabbing the right dice. Yeah, I guess, I, I don't know, they're neat. That, that's all I can say. They're, they're definitely not necessary. They're just neat to have. Um, the colors do match the colors on the card. So like your 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 sword, your melee attack has a sword and is red on your character. So there is some coordinating there. So it's not like guesswork or looking for a symbol. Now the D6s though, I have no clue. I honestly don't know exactly what the intended use for these are. Now during a game of Aventuria, at least based on the core box and the couple expansions I've opened, the only time you use D6s are for damage. That's the only thing I've ever used them for. I, I maybe no I can't even think of a chance where you roll it for a random result like on an even on an odd so I have to assume these are weapon damage dice now supporting that theory four of the dice feature icons of weapons that are in the game on the sixth side there's a flail a fireball a bow and a sword and they're also color-coded but that doesn't matter like the 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 the, the whatever the flail is orange or whatever the fireball's red but then there's another die that's standard d6 but on the six it has an a it's the, the Aventuria A, right? Like the, the logo. That monster damage? I, again, a regular player will probably know which is their magic damage without even thinking, but I know I don't even feel close to the target market for these dice. Yeah. Now, now the stranger part is these are all just single D6s, right? Like, it would make more sense if a fireball did different damage than a flail. Although in some cases they do, right? Like the flail in particular, I recognize because my character has that, the dwarf I play. It does 3d6 damage, but there's only 1d6 with a flail on it. Like, I, I, I don't quite know what they were going for here. Yeah, and I'm not sure because I haven't seen the multiple, uh, sorry, players use multiple d6 damage yet. Yeah. I've seen it come from, from villains, but as a player, my deck yet has never had me roll more than one. So. Right. Yeah, the, the, the half of rogue may only do single D6 damage. Whereas the dwarf, I have 2D6 weapons and a 3D6 weapon. Now it does cost nine endurance, it's big, which is why I want the die, because I'm like, I have my big flail, so I want the flail die, because, I, I don't know. Anyway, dice, they're, they're neat, they're, yeah, they're kind of cool. People like next, dice. <laughs> next is the book. This starts off with a number of rule clarifications. 
including rules for discard piles, because it doesn't actually mention in the book where to track those, actually detailed timing rules, which people are going to recognize from other dueling card games, uh, clarifications on what fate points can be spent on. Uh, this is mainly due to a translation issue. I think we even mentioned in our full review where it just wasn't totally clear and it provides a nice chart that shows this is what you can use them for in dual mode and here's what you can use them for in the other mode. This is followed by a Q&A section with even more rule clarifications. The rule clarifications are actually half the book. Now, after that, you get the official tournament rules. Uh, these are provides three different formats and talks about making trees and all that fun stuff about running tournaments. Uh, the one part, excuse me, the one part I really liked was a spot on egg etiquette that says this. Please make an etiquette roll and use a fate point if necessary. Adventuria is a fast and action-packed game, so there might be the occasional heated moment. Yeah, this is the sort of thing that all games need to have when they get popular but you don't always want to rush out at the start in that core set because mm -hmm. it could be a waste of resources developing a tournament system that is never going to catch on in your game. Now, the final section of the book in Arsenal Heroes provides a variant deck list for each of the four core heroes, along as some information on how they built the deck, why they built it that way, and strategy tips. All right, a nice little addition to help newer deck builders get ideas on how to customize. Now, finally, we get to the cards. This box set includes a complete set of the non-character specific, non-character unique cards from the core game. Now, it is noted on this box that you, with this box, can now build every possible deck combination from the core box. Now, in addition for this, the expansion also comes with two copies of five different promo cards. So if you do get a bit of new content, as well as just repeats of the cards that are in the core set. So this is, uh, we've got an idea of what you get and how it's used. The important question remains, is this worth picking up for Aventuria fans? Aventuria Arsenal Heroes is a rather useful box of expansion content for the Aventuria adventure card game. While marketed as an expansion for the dual mode of play, there's plenty in this box that'll be just as useful for groups playing cooperative adventures. I thought the component quality here was excellent. I appreciate the dice are actually etched and not printed, which means I don't have to worry about the getting rubbed off after lots of play. And I actually like the box insert because all the other adventure stuff I've seen so far is just like pile everything in the empty box at the end. The nice thing I've actually realized about this box insert that I didn't mention above is that it can be a great way for transporting your Adventuria dual deck along with your dice. So you take that deck out and you put your 30 character dice in and your, your, your cards and everything else in. And I think this would be a great way to like, you know, bring your stuff to a friend's place or play at a local game store, or bring it to a tournament. No, it's not as fancy as like a nice card case or whatever, but it's very serviceable. I noticed that you've incorporated this insert into your bigger Aventuria box containment solution yes. which well for now <laughs> for now we'll, we'll see if it stays there it is a way to keep the dice from rattling around i don't know i i, I don't know it's, it's better than what came with the game and uh, getting back to the dice i yeah, there's no need for them but i think they're neat i i didn't know they were in there so i thought it was cool to see them i'm like that's neat um we we tried them we used them we tried to use them through appropriate skills um ulysses spiel the yellow dodge die you sent us seems to be unbalanced because we haven't made a successful check with it yet <laughs> now my biggest issue um with the dice though is this is a set for a single player like yes you could share the dice but for games like this like i want to have my own set of dice i don't want to share them with anyone else and this is actually my main disappointment with this expansion overall. And something I noticed even when doing the unboxing video, this entire set is designed for one player, specifically interested in deck building and competitive play. Like it provides you with dice for one player, the ability for one player to use the cards in the box, combined with the cards in the core set to make every possible combination of deck. Even the hero builds listed in the booklet are made for competitive dueling decks and not really for cooperative adventures. Now, to really get the most out of this expansion, if you've got a game group at home that's playing Adventuria together, is you may want to pick up a copy of this for every player. Now, to be honest, it does say right on the box. It says dual expansion. So, yeah, that is what it's intended to be. 
The thing is, while duels are neat and all, what we really like playing is the adventure, uh, adventure mode, the cooperative adventure. It was really hoping this box would include enough cards for everyone to be able to customize their decks in a way they wanted. And I don't want to incur the cost of picking up more copies of Arsenal Heroes to do this. Though I guess that's a way cheaper alternative than buying multiple core boxes. Yeah, no, it's an intriguing way to develop the system. And I wonder if the way the players in Germany do things differently than North American players, it could be that expectations between cultures have made this as distinct a product as it is in, in the, that strange way? Yeah, that's possible. I, I don't know enough about the German gaming industry or what's going on over there to know. Now, all that said, there is still plenty of the stuff in this box that a group mainly interested in cooperative play would be interested in. While there may not be enough cards for four players to customize their decks in every possible combination, there's still plenty of cards here, which means that each player can do some deck building without having to cannibalize and steal cards from other players' decks. Now, depending on how many players you have, you may not need to steal cards from other players' decks at all. Yeah, it, it will really come down to how many players and what sort of deck you're looking to build. If you're really looking to complement each other and develop a multi-pronged co-op strategy, it may not be a problem at all. Now, if you are interested in playing duels in Adventure, especially if you play, especially if you play to play competitively in tournament play, you're probably going to want to pick up Arsenal Heroes, at least one copy. Not only will it give you access to every possible deck combination, you also get five new promo cards, two of each, and a cool set of dice and a way to transport your stuff. Now, for those just interested in adventure play, I think picking a copy of this box might be worth doing. In the base game, if you want to customize your heroes, you are forced to tear apart one of the other decks. There, and, or make sure you swap and do like a math trade between all your decks so they all end up at 30. By having extra copies of the core cards, the need to do this is lessened. Now, if you only have one of you, yeah, you can do it with everything. But if you're only playing with two or three heroes, there's always that fourth hero's deck you can kind of tear apart. And along with that, again, you get a cool set of dice you can share or split among your group. While it's true to fully utilize this expansion, you would need a copy for every player. You probably don't need that if you're playing cooperatively. And if you do feel you want, want more than one copy, if you really all want to make the ultimate deck and use all the cards, I appreciate that it's much cheaper alternative to buying multiple core sets, which is something many of the other non-collectible card games expect you to do. Well, that's it for our review of Arsenal of Heroes for the Adventuria Adventure card game. I welcome you to also check out the more detailed written review of this expansion over on the blog at tabletopbellhop.com.